this passage is from the New King James Version, and it's in Romans chapter 8. Great chapter, by the way. Let me just start with verse 31. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? And then allow me to drop down to verse 37, which I'd like to focus on. Verse 37 says, Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. At first blush, we might ask, how can you be more than a conqueror? I had a friend in high school, happened to be my best friend. He went on to be a stunning swimmer. And actually, in the Rome Olympics, he not only got a gold medal, but he also set a world record. Somebody could say, well, you can't do much better than that. <clears throat> How could you do better than that? A gold medal and setting a world record. How, could you be, how can you be more than a conqueror? And what does Paul mean by that? Well, years ago, I heard a story about this. It's an illustration uh, in which a three-masted ship is sailing off the coast of England. And if you've ever seen pictures of England's coastline, it's rocky. Lots of rocks. It's in fact a very deadly place for a ship to be that's out of control. Uh, so the story goes, the ship is sailing, uh, a wind comes up, a storm is right behind it, and before long, as the uh, ship is close to the English shore, the captain is very much aware that he's got a problem. The wind is ripping the sails off the masts, and now he's feeling that the masts are in danger. He drops his anchor into the sea. The anchor holds, and the ship is not driven into the rocks. He's conquered the storm. But what does it mean to be more than a conqueror? The second scenario is same ship, three-masted, sailing along the coast of England. The storm comes up. The winds are driving the ship toward the shore where these craggy rocks are that would destroy a ship in a second. The wind comes up and shreds the sails. The masts are starting to show signs of a possible failure. The captain drops his anchor. The anchor attaches itself to the sea floor, but it fails to hold. And the ship is driven into the rocks and is totally destroyed. Huh, no conquering there. But what about the third scenario? Same ship, same captain, three-masted ship. The wind comes up. It is ferocious. It's driving the ship toward the English shore where the rocks are. The captain lowers the anchor to save his ship and his crew. The anchor grabs the bottom, but instantly fails. And the ship is driven toward the shore, but between the rocks and into a safe harbor. That seems to be a good illustration of how, because of God's love for us through Jesus Christ, believers are more than conquerors. Even the storms of life, which can batter us tremendously, uh, cannot fail to keep us from a safe haven. And that safe haven is, is gained by faith alone, in Christ alone. If we are in Christ, if we are trusting in Christ, no matter what our trials, our tribulations, afflictions, um, the taking away of peace and rest in our souls through daily uh, living, there's a safe harbor for us. It's Christ. And all those afflictions, viewed correctly, will drive us right into the arms of our loving Savior. We are, indeed, more than conquerors. In your life, <clears throat> do you live a life of victory? What, what exactly is victory? It's spoken of much in the scriptures. Victory suggests a battle. Victory suggests there's a winner. Do you feel like you're in a battle? Of course we do. We're all in a battle. It rages continuously. We have an enemy of, uh, in Satan and in our own self-nature that constantly works against us to keep us distracted from Jesus, who is our safe harbor. So how do we fare? <clears throat> Do we feel victorious in the course of the day? 
Do peace and rest rule in our soul? I would suggest from my own experience, this is a continual battle. But God wants us because it's our birthright to experience peace and rest in our daily routine. Even our affliction, afflictions can drive us into that, ha that harbor, that safe harbor. So my suggestion is to think clearly about the aspect of the battle, but also about the fact that it is our birthright in Christ to experience victory. We are not destroyed. We are not kept from God's promises of peace and rest, if we believe.